Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. Now a while ago we took a look at the original Spark Maker and despite a couple of flaws it is quite a decent machine considering that it is super super cheap for a usable resin printer. Now Spark Maker does have an upgraded version, the Spark Maker HD, which, oh wait, is it this one? No. Actually, it is this one. Uh, they look remarkably similar from the outside and they do have a lot of things in common, but it supports a much higher resolution than the original Spark Maker, which just results in much higher detailed trends. Now, along with that, I'm also taking a look at this Spark Maker resin, and the special thing about this is that it is water washable. And that's a huge deal, as you're gonna see. Uh, I tested the other. Uh, Spark Maker was just regular resin which I had to use isopropyl alcohol to clean which is a big pain in the butt so I'm gonna show you all the advantages of using water washable resin. Now full disclosure Spark Maker did send over the Spark Maker HD uh, after they saw my video of the original Spark Maker and but that's not gonna influence my opinion in any way I just wanna let you know that this is what happened. So unboxing wise it's basically the same as the Spark Maker. Uh, the box looks exactly the same, except that on the outside the tick is on the different box. There is actually on the back, if you take a look, uh, there is a box where they tick if it's a Spark Maker or a Spark Maker HD. So the packaging looks exactly the same, and when you open it up, uh, you get the same machine. You just have to untie a little bit and level the bed, and then you're basically done, and you're ready to print. Now, it also supports the same, just single button operation. You load the file onto your uh, SD card that you insert. It has to be named print, in this case dot full HD. Uh, in the other one it was some different line ending, but that doesn't matter. You just have to make sure that this is the only file that is named this way, and then it's automatically gonna print that. You can have other files on the SD card, it just can't be named print.fhd. This is a very simple solution and it does work, it's just kind of a pain in the butt to manage these files since if you want to have different files lined up uh, for different prints you're gonna have to manually change the file name to match and you have to make sure that you don't uh, forget which file is what and manage that somehow. I do wish there was like an LCD where you could just select uh, which file you want to print like on most FDM printers nowadays but I can also understand that to get a very, very low price point, which the Spark Maker Full HD is still at, uh, they do have to make some sacrifices, and it's not that big of a deal. While it is not printing, this button is also a wheel to move the platform up and down, and that's just like a convenient way to move it up a little bit uh, if you need to. Then, when you get the thing in operation, you plug in the power supply, you immediately no notice that this thing sounds like a jet engine. Now, the Spark Maker already wasn't the quietest machine out there, but the Spark Maker Full HD takes it to a whole nother level. Now, I think what the reason is that uh, to have the higher resolution screen, they also need to have some more bright uh, UV light underneath and just more electronics stack it hard. That's why they have to have a fan that blows more air. But oh my God, is it loud. It's so annoying that I had to put it outside to a different room. And I don't mind if the other 3D printers are printing in here. I'm not bothered by that. But this fan was so loud that I had to just move it outside. Like, I'm actually considering just like removing the whole bottom uh, electronics enclosure, ripping that fan out and just putting a giant like PC cooling fan in there to get enough airflow but still keep this thing quiet as this is not a pleasant machine to have around just due to the fan noise. Apart from that, the machine uh, is pretty decent. The, this uh, cover here is ju just sitting on top uh, and it protects the resin from the UV light from the outside air as it would harden otherwise. And it's not held down in any way but it's perfectly fine and this machine has a nice small footprint so you could just put it on your desk if it wasn't for that fan. But I'm gonna stop ranting about that fan right now. And then I started doing some first test prints. I poured some of the water washable resin in there and printed the first part, uh, which was just a couple of those, these um, make rocks. 
and these are like little towers uh, that just show off the resin possibilities and oh my god that just turned out beautiful right off the bat uh, there was I used a profile that was provided inside of the slicing software on the computer which I'm gonna show you in a little bit and it just worked first try taking it like detailed look at these uh, rocks uh, like there is not much that I could critique on. Now, I'm no resin expert, so um, th maybe there are some things that uh, could be better, but for as far as I can see, all the features are printed. Even the tiny little text is legible. I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna be able to pick that up with the camera since I don't have a macro lens uh, this detailed, uh, but they just turned out great. And so did most of the other prints that I made. Uh, now I had one issue where uh, this print failed, but I'm pretty sure that that was a cropped file where my SD card kind of got unplugged uh, while writing to it. So I'm not gonna put that to the printer. Um, but these uh, lattice structures, they also turn out super nice. Uh, it's really impressive if you, if you look at these and like, it would just be plain impossible to print these with an FDM printer at this scale. And this just shows the potential that resin really has. I also printed uh, this beautiful castle that I uh, just recently printed in big on my FDM machine and that I also attempted to print uh, on the original Sparkmaker. Um, here you do start noticing that the resolution is a little bit higher on this machine and just some details are a bit better uh, visible. Now, the even bigger difference though, why this castle is very nice intact, has all that little towers and looks beautiful, whereas the one I printed on the original Sparkmaker has like towers, tops missing and is broken in different places, is actually the cleaning process. And this brings me to this resin. And now of course this resin would also work with the original Sparkmaker, so this is not about the machine anymore, but what a washable resin, while you still should not just take the print, put it under the tap and flush down the drain. You do have to capture the water that you use to wash these prints since this resin is still very, very nasty. But you can just take uh, the captured water into a bucket, put it out in the sun, wait till all the resin is cured and then it is relatively safe to pour it down the drain. You can also put it through a filter to get out all the resin that will be even better and throw that into the trash. By the way, you should also put all the paper towels that you use that have resin on them out in the sun for the resin to cure since it just is really nasty stuff this resin. And it's still the same thing applies that you should not get it in on your skin as it can cause irritations and it's super nasty to get off of things. The only difference is that instead of having to use a bunch of alcohol that you have to lock from the store, you can just use tap water to clean everything, which is just so much simpler. And that's why I was just able to put a bucket down underneath the tap, rinse this part off and get it very, very clean. Instead of trying to preserve as much alcohol as possible and in the process breaking off little towers and bits and pieces. Now, even with water washable resin, resin 3D printing is still a messy process and you have to post process them. Uh, not as much with this resin, uh, I found that the, the curing inside of the machine is almost complete, like just putting it inside of my curing box for like five minutes was enough, or putting it outside in the sun or even maybe on a cloudy day, uh, it hardened very very quickly. But it's, you still have to, after you take it off you have to wash it, you have to cure it and you have to then remove all the supports. So there is just a little bit more than with FDM printing where you just take it off the build plate and you're done. But for me personally, I'm never gonna print with not water washable resin again, unless it's some sort of very high uh, precision or very high strength resin that's just not available in a water format. It is a bit more expensive uh, to get the water washable ones, but it's just so worth it in my opinion. Now, another thing that has changed since I did the review for it at the original Sparkmaker, or maybe that I just wasn't aware of, that there is a different software now available um, that has a bit more features than uh, the one I used with the original Sparkmaker. Now, I believe that it would also work with the original. Inside the software, you can just import the models, uh, so scale them uh, in whichever size you want them, and then what is very important with uh, the any sort of resin printing is the support. With FDM printing you can probably get away with missing support sometimes and you can get some just air droopies and after a couple of layers it uh, recovers. 
But if you don't have supports on a part that requires supports with resin printing, it just stays stuck to the bottom of the tank and does not get printed. And everything that it comes after it also does not get properly printed and all messed up. So if you miss the support in one little part of a uh, print, not just that little tiny corner of the part gets ruined, but probably the entire print. So what I do is just use the automatic uh, support generation first and then from there I look are all these supports necessary like on these lattice structures I was able to remove a couple supports that would have been difficult to remove uh, after the fact and in some cases you also do have to add some additional ones which is really quite simple to do in the software and the generation after you just click where you want them is quite good. The settings you don't really have to adjust much. Uh, all the profiles are included on the SD card for uh, their uh, own resin, uh, which just makes it super easy. You select the detail level. Uh, I printed all my test prints at 0.05 millimeter layer height, which I don't see any layer lines, so I believe that is perfectly fine. You don't need to go to 0.025. It's not necessary to go even smaller. And the other settings, you really don't really have to mess with any settings. Uh, like on an FDM printer, you mess with uh, like speed and you can mess with fill and all of that stuff. Uh, you just kind of don't need to worry about any other settings. Like What you can do is hollow out objects inside of uh, the slicer software as well. I did that on this castle print uh, so that it's not printed solid as that would require a lot of resin and it just kind of hollows it out and most of the resin just kind of drains out while you're printing and there will be some resin in clothes that is not fully hardened and you can add holes to it and like kind of wash it out uh, after the fact or you can just leave it in there and um, what I not, would not do is just add like one or two tiny holes at the top hope to, that it drips out and I did that on one of the parts and it just kind of blobbed onto it while it hanging overhead and did not properly drain out but kind of messed up the print. So either you need to add proper big holes that you can properly wash it out or just leave it enclosed, uh, which is probably also perfectly fine. And with that, I think that's pretty much uh, all I have to say about this printer. It's not very different than the original Sparkmaker. Uh, and if you haven't seen that video yet, of course, go check it out. Uh, I still recommend the Sparkmaker Full HD if you can get it for a good price. Uh, it's definitely worth it over the regular Sparkmaker unless it's like a lot cheaper. Uh, I wouldn't really go with it since it's just like the increased resolution just gives you more flexibility and it is not that much more expensive. So if there are any other things you want to know about this specific resin printer or just resin printing in general, uh, be it about slicing models like what you can print uh, or whatever, leave it down in the comments and I might make a future video about it. Also make sure to like this video, get subscribed so you don't miss any of my future content. You can check out my Instagram or the social media, all linked down below. So thanks for watching and until next time.